Well, what a glorious day. It's Thursday, not Wednesday. And there's a good reason why I'm camping on Thursday, not Wednesday, which I'll tell you when we get up onto the trail. We started not in Edale, in Hayfield. Uh, the car park doesn't have any Wi-Fi. You can't pay with your phone. Uh, so, I learnt last time you just park on the road and it's free. Um, not that I'm averse to paying, but uh, just you can't, you can't really do it and stay safely. Smashing a little campsite. There is a, a toilet uh, at the entrance to this campsite, which I, I used. Uh, it's free for anybody to use, which is extremely useful. Oh dear, I've got some steps. I think this is the first of many. Just coming onto the start of open access land here. Not a bad place to live this. Wow, look at that. How green is my valley? And my daughter said, well, come and work for me. And so I started that this week. She walks dogs, has an extremely successful business. I'll put the, the details on the screen now. And if you live in the Wakefield area and the Pontefract and Normanton area, uh, she does daycare, dog boarding, uh, and the dog walking where uh, we collect the dogs from the house, take them to a field. They have an absolute riot in the field. And then we take them home. What better job can you do? You know, playing with dogs all day. And I, you know, I really bond with dogs. The dogs have only known me a couple of weeks, but they're going whappy when they see me. And I'm gradually getting to know the names and how they work. And it's just, <laughs> my cup properly <laughs> runs over. The only thing is that I've, I can't do the Wednesday because I'm my days that, I, that she needs me to work. So I was walking dogs this morning, I uh, got in. Uh, I'd already got my bag pretty much packed, just finished it off. Uh, as it happened, put my contact lenses in and then off I go. So that's why I'm here. So, can't get away from kinder, can I? We are going up kinder low. Uh, and there's a very good reason. I'm fascinated by maps. And when you look at the map for Kinder, there are mad woman stones, druid stones, uh, no stool. And at Kinder Low, there is a trig point, so we'll have a trig dance hopefully, but there is also Kindalow Cavern or Kindalow Cave. Now then, that got me thinking. That's interesting. But when you look into it, there isn't a Kindalow Cave. It's on all the OS maps. But round about a hundred years ago, The story goes that the game wardens blew it up. Yeah, blew it up. Now, why would they do that? Well, it's because at that time, the Enclosures Act had come in and you weren't allowed to go onto Kinder. 
it was private. And the game wardens didn't want people going up to see this cave. And they also didn't want the risk of this cave being there because, uh, well, we say it's a cave. It was really just a, a coffin shaped hole in the ground. Now, remarkably enough, I've got a picture of it, which I'll put on the screen now. Um, the New Mills website is absolutely excellent. And much of this, what I'm about to tell you now is from the New Mills website. And this drawing was on there. Yes, of course, you see stories like this cavern and you think, well, I wonder what the story actually is. And loads of websites you go to just give you almost word for word the same rubbish. It's like when I was investigating the, the millstones and the dogstone. You get the same story off everything, but it's a little bit more if you just do a bit of digging, which I did. And apparently it wasn't blown up. Some uh, game wardens put some railway sleepers over the, the entrance and covered it with peat. Uh, now if that's been there for a hundred years, don't know, that's uh, don't think that's going to be very safe, is it? And there's, on the New Mills website, there's uh, a story from a paper, or I'll, I'll put the date and the, the reference on the screen, of two lads who wanted to go and investigate. So off they go with a big ball of string and a rope and a candle, matches, because of course that's all there was then. And uh, they get to it and they lower some rope down. And there's a five yard drop, so they get down into that, onto a short platform, four yard drop, and then a very steep passageway coming off, going into a series of caves, a series of caverns linked together getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, coming in a westerly direction, apparently. And the biggest of these caves are ginormous. And then for whatever reason, uh, the candle went out. Uh -uh. And in the panic of trying to light some matches, which of course have all gone damp, so it wouldn't light, they got split up. So they're split up underground, um, yelling, which is echoing off the sides of the cavern so they can't find each other. And they thought, oh, that's it, where you are. What do we do now? Nobody knows we're here. We snuck our way in. Well, luckily, some shepherds had seen them go. So they organised a search party and they managed to find them after 20 hours. Uh, very lucky. Uh, but that's how we know, or well, one of the stories that we know. Apparently there is a, some poetry carved into a rock just at the bottom of the first bit, sort of saying, you really should think twice about going down here. Uh, and again, that's all from this New Mills website. So that's, that was a, enough of a pretext for me to come up and have a look. Well, I thought I was going to have to take some water off the path, which isn't looking very nice, but I found this. That's flowing quite fast. Uh, well, I feel much better getting some water. I've got two litres filtered and one and a half litres unfiltered in the bag, and then I filled and filtered one of my little 500 mils out sample milk water, but I'd rather have too much. There's not that much further to climb now. 
that's the that's the kind of top there. So I'm just following this round, going to Edel Cross, I think. Catch you soon. Right, so quite a few changes this week. Uh, I have, as I was talking about last time, uh, sold my three season inner on eBay and bought a four season inner. And this has more solid mesh. I was just, the wind was just rattling through the other one. Um, you've always got the option of opening the doors to, to get some ventilation on them. So um, I think I've done the right thing in getting the four season. It's got the advantage of having a T-zip on each side. So I can open it completely like this, which I quite like. Um, I bought a new foil mat for the floor that uh, just about fills up the whole tent rather than the smaller one I had, um, which was a cut down one and the edge was fraying quite badly. Um, and I have brought my cheapo airbed because I've got a Cita Summit air chair, which I'm quite liking. So it's it weighs about 200 grams, but of course then you've got to bring the airbed up as well. Um, so the other chairs were about 500 grams. So I'm probably a little bit in deficit there, but I'm okay with that. All right, so other things I've got. I've bought these um, packing cubes. So I've got one for emergency stuff, first aid, etc. Got one for my night kit. Got one for my electrics and gizmos and sprays and things. Um, and I've already always had that red one. I've just got my food in. Beers for tonight. And I've got a pack of crisps and a couple of protein flapjacks. Uh, when I come to do my, my cooking, I'll show you um, slight changes to the alcohol stove and, and bottle I've bought. Um, but, be a time. <laughs> First one. Whitbury Brewery. Black Death Gothic Stout. And of course it's 6.66%. Had to be, didn't it? Uh, this was a present from my uh, my daughter Eve. Um, I did some DIY jobs for her when she was away on holiday last week. Whitby Brewery stands in the shadow of Whitby Abbey, surrounded by rugged headland and stormy seas. We work hard to create some of the best beers around. If ever you go to Whitby, it's well worth climbing up on the top um, by the Abbey, going up the. 200 steps or whatever they are uh, and, and calling at the brewery. They do pizza, um, which I think is why the family went, um, but they did send me a photograph of them having um, a rather nice um, stout. And I know this is going to be good. Super frothy. But I'm sat outside, so I'm not bothered. I don't know what makes it gothic. I mean, it's just the thing about Whitby, isn't it? But oh yeah, that is lovely. That's a nice strength. Um, it's clearly got some teeth. It's, it's got a bit of bite to it but it's not overly strong. You can't taste the alcohol in it, which you sometimes can with the really strong ones. It's just got a nice flavor. Drink if you dare, black gothic stout. It's as dark as death and tasty as sin. An uncompromising taste sensation. It'll make your boobos explode. Suitable vegans, whoa. 
ebony, rusty barley, velvet rich. I wonder how they put ebony in it. They do put some rubbish on, don't they? Anyway, cheers. And I'm going to have with it some deluxe mature cheddar and red onion crisps. Now these are from Lidl, six pack, really cheap, um, very, very tasty. I'm quite enjoying these. I've also got some um, little protein flapjacks. is called swine's back right at the very top i think it's the best pitch i've ever had yeah yeah well there's been loads of people walking past down there on the pennine way nobody's noticed us up here yeah i know i think it's really good we've got 360 degree views the whole of the peak district the whole of edale vale we can see all the Castleton area. I can see the Woolpacks where we camped last week. I can see Grindslow where we camped the week before that. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, I know. Did you enjoy the walk up? Good. Well, we came up from Hayfield, didn't we? That's um, that's the back route. That's not coming up for you, Dale. Yeah, I know. Free car parking as well. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Catch you later, then, mate. Bye. You must remember which one is the filtered water. But actually, in this case, it doesn't really matter. So, I have to remember which one of my packs I've put this in. It's not that one. Yeah, might need the food one. Yep. Asbestos mat. Great idea from uh, Andrew Beavers. And there is my alcohol stove stand. Gone down a size in the containers. Oh, they are fiddly, but it weighs, can't even measure how little it weighs, it's um, a couple of grams. What I find. with the fuel for this it always goes where it's not meant to go which is of course dangerous i was using the red bottle which is all right 
Um, I've got this one from, um, I'll put a link in the description. You can be careful. I'm not getting any spilt. I did get a spare cap for it, so you can take off this nozzle cap and put the other one on. Supposedly safer. It doesn't fit properly. It just goes all over. So that's a bit of a pain. Right, so I've got some naked noodles and it says, Three hundred mil. So I'm doing two packs. So that's about that much. Come on, you swine. There we go. So that's a titanium mug. Um, I don't think it's a Tox one. Uh, I've gone from a, from a, a new uh, spill proof alcohol burner. I'm using the original Phantom pan rest one. But that's quite that's quite contained on that. And I know that I'm not gonna transfer any heat to the ground. Um, you'll notice when I clear up in the morning there's a, a burnt patch that was there before I got here. Someone else has done that. Um, I've got me I mean, I've been using this, this fire steel um, since I started wild camping and it's still got loads of wear left on it, so I've got that. Got a simmer ring with it, which I, I won't be using tonight. Got two cups which fit uh, nicely inside each other. For my tea and my coffee, when I want one of those. And I have a tiny baby wee little thing that I can use to lift the pot up top of the pot, but actually what I normally do is just use my titanium uh, fork I think I'm going to go for. I'll just leave it up with that. So that'll be there. Um, I've gone for a collapsible doofer. That ain't gonna get both of them in. So I'll probably just do them one at a time, which is fine. I'm not in any hurry. Might even have, have both. I've got a um, Naked Noodles Korean style beef flavoured egg noodles and Naked Japanese style chicken yakisoba flavoured noodles. And I bet. Yep, so that is beef style, vegetarian, and this is chicken style, vegetarian. So they aren't beef and chicken, it's just stuff in there that tastes like it. So they're gonna go in there when I'm, uh, when I'm with you. I've got a couple of leggy bands which I use. Got this as well when I got the stove. Um, it's just got different radii in the corner, which you can get into your pan to scrape it out when you need to clean it. Uh, yeah. So, while I'm waiting, time for another beer. Nothing special. Camden Stout. I think I got a four pack of them, maybe. Um, what is it? Suitable for vegetarians and vegans. I'm doing very good vegetarian stuff. Just 4%. That's fine. Oh, good grief. 
got one of them widget things in it. Yeah, that's all right. Beer, I'll do. Cheers. I've just come in the tent. It's um just a bit blustery. Um, just taking it, just chilling a little bit. The it's twenty past seven now. It's not set to go below ten degrees all night. But if you put in the wind chill on that, it's going to be chilly. So. Uh, as soon as it starts to get a bit darker, uh, I'll be shutting up and, uh, and getting into my um, sleeping bag. I did say I've seen nobody. Um, since then, a bloke just suddenly appeared at the side of me. He'd come up here to pitch. Um, or actually, Bivy, I think. Uh, I said he hasn't brought his tent with him. Um, but he just came to say hello, he was just on his way around, he said he'd, he'd bob up to see if it was free. Um, and then two young lads climbed up just shortly after him and they're looking for somewhere that's not boggy. Um, I said, well, just go on to Edel Rocks and just behind there there's a couple of nice spots. Um, or walk around to the wall packs I and mean, it's only a few hundred yards away. Really. Uh, and it's flat, isn't it, from here straight round, so you know, I don't think we're going to have a problem. I'm going to... Um, hoping I brought it. Yes! Got my magic um, little dab radio. Just listen to a bit of Radio 4. In this, you know, well, does anybody? They're very clean. Does anybody? They're always getting out of baths. Yes, yes. Them. I mean, it's so good of them to want to take their clothes off. And... Well, that's been a great night. Noodles were brilliant. The bowl is just not big enough. Um, needs to be my bigger bowl, I think. And for the sake of probably the same weight, it's just not worth worrying about. So that's good for my morning when I'm going to have some porridge in there. I have brought some and I'm going to have it. Um, yeah, no good. Got the drone up. Um, it was too windy earlier. UAV forecast told me not suitable. Uh, I'm just downloading the footage now. I just did a, some basic fly far away and look at the tent stuff and then went along the edge. I've noticed that there's uh, must be those lads that went past the camped just down the way. Just boiling some more water. Uh, I'm going to have a hot chocolate. Uh, I've got a time lapse going, but it's just going to show some clouds moving slowly. I think it's not going to show anything amazing. Um, I'll get it all set up ready for... I'm going to switch to this side of the tent. Uh, ready for some sun up and see if we get a sunrise but um yeah that's me signing off uh, everything's gone hunky-dory really good Great night's sleep. Yeah, pretty solid. I did wake, as usual, a couple of times. Uh, but yeah, 
very, very warm. Um, comfortably warm. Um, Morning, Duncan. How did he sleep? Oh, good. Yeah, well, I'm just going to make a cup of coffee and a cup of tea, and I'm going to have my porridge. Oh, that's a bit rubbish. So that was hot, and it's come off. Gone on to it. Now this will be cold, so it'll be difficult to light today. <laughs> nice sunrise. So, uh, let's have a look. Da, 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 da. Into my food bag. Uh, a black today, I think. So, a coffee bag in there. two tea bags in and I put some milk hallelujah got these from um, Ikea it's UHT so lasts forever and probably is very bad for you now this will be good for the porridge which I put in one of these it's one of the um Little packs of uh, Quaker porridge. I think this is a chocolate one, actually. Don't know, but it just fits inside that container. Uh, the the Quaker porridge one's quite big, so it's bulky. So coffee, tea. Uh, just waiting for it to boil. Not gonna try to reduce the amount of tent talk on this video. So just gonna talk quickly. Yet another plane going over. That's the only problem with this. Um... Well, it's not a problem really, is it? With camping over here, is the amount of planes that go over, and they, as you can hear, very loud. Uh, but that's a minor problem for such a wonderful, beautiful place. Oh, it's a little bird. Got a shock when it saw me. Um, just wait for it to go. Edit this out, Phil. Okay, mate. <laughs> I think the sheep just like to come and just stand on somewhere prominent and showboat a little bit. I mean, there is absolutely no reason for that sheep going up on top of there. Well, I think we've just got that packed up, Brian. Just getting the last of the stuff in here. The electronics and the luncheon.
No, I didn't use my sunglasses coming up, did I? Well, the a tool ready to be deployed, Duncan. So well, that's not mine, but I'll take it down anyway because we'd leave it better if we can, don't we? Anything else you can see, Dunk? Right then, let's get off. Are you coming? Come on. Duncan, come on. This is Edel Rocks. There's a couple of people camping there. It's a, right in the middle of it, look. Sheep. Sat on a ledge, getting the best view. So that's the slot I camped, first time. It's not perfectly level, but it's nice and sheltered. And I could get my flapoon on there, which is quite good. It's one of those awkward trig points to get to, a bit like the um, one at Blackstone Edge. So I'm gonna have to do a bit of climbing for this one. You put your left leg in, your left leg out You do the okey cokey and you turn around That's what it's all about Hey! Hello Trig Point Kindalo Trig Point 4113 Beautiful Some of these cairns are extremely old Um. Some of them are burial mounds. Um, and I'm talking sort of thousands of years old. Um, I'm surprised that Kinder Scout hasn't got more of them. Um, it's been undisturbed at the top. Maybe just the bog isn't suitable for it. In places like the Woolpacks, maybe not. Doesn't have them. But there's a uh, there's a possibility of two or three I can see around here, which is raised prominently like this one. And they would have been um, a family uh, burial ground, probably. The early ones were. Um, the later ones uh, were, were a, more of a status were for the, for the important people in the family. But the early ones were just sort of a, um, a meeting place, almost, I suppose, like a church. Uh, where everyone will come up, um, you know, Uncle Fred's died, right, we'll take him up to the, um, the, the, the family map mound, leave it, um, and then come back a few weeks later and, and put the bones away. And probably when they were there, they'd, they'd get up Auntie Betty and, and the other family members, you know, get their stones up, their bones up. Um, and just, you know, probably tell tales about their lives and things. And, um, of course, this is completely hearsay, but it's a widely accepted thing that happened um, until um, the, the tribal bits happened um, and that became a problem. Um, so they were, they were, you know, it was easy for one tribe to go and desecrate a man in the middle of the tribe, um, which is why you tend to get them on these prominent places where they were good. Nice to sort of think I'm going to be spend the rest of my time in whatever form I am in a place like this, which is just well, well, speaks for itself. Isn't it? I think it's safe to say this is a quite an important one. Uh, it's very high up, is this? Uh, it's obviously on a very uh, important position, overlooking well miles around. very very prominent this they have identified that this has got some um, plinth stones around the outside of it um, I don't think it's ever been dug but the footpath used to go straight across the top 
um, and they stepped in and rerouted the path around the edge, which was good, um, and then filled in the, the part of the footpath that was going over the top. Obviously it's overgrown now. That would have been an information sign, but gone. Yeah, so uh, you can see if you were buried up here, that's the status. That's status for your tribe, your family. So this is the area where Kindalow Cavern is marked on the map. Now, I don't think it's going to be sort of in the middle there, but you can see these overhanging rocks at the side. Yeah, I can see that's very likely. And there's some more below me here. You can see uh, Kinder Reservoir in the distance, or even along the side of just down here. Uh, so the game wardens covered it over um, rather than blew it up. It is fascinating to realise that there's all those caves and hollow open spaces beneath it. Um, it's estimated that 25% of the land in this area has caves underneath it which is amazing. Just want to comment on these, the stone steps that have been cut in here, going all the way to the top. Absolutely incredible. I've just met a lady who said she, she remembers this before they had these steps in and it was lethal. Well, the, the, the people that have done this are angels. I may not often say that. I'm going to be signing off there. I'm about uh, a couple hundred yards away from the car. Um, what a fantastic camp. I think it was the right choice to camp on Swine's Back. Um, Kindle was really busy last night. I don't know what was happening there. But... And then it was also the right choice to come back along down Kindle. Uh, it was very steep at first, but um, stunning all the way and a very well maintained path coming down. Um, steps cut all the way down the very steep bit. Um, the OS route, which I'm, I'm going to put on the thing, is the last couple of bits on it quite tricky. Um, <clears throat> one narrow field full of um, uh, are they called books? The um, male sheep, um, which I was unsure how to deal with, but cost the sheep, so they all ran away. Uh, and then the last couple of uh, fields were very steep uh, with really slippery grass. So that was, um, yeah, glad to watch that. Anyway, if you made it here, thank you so much for watching. I will put a link to all the new stuff in the um, description. Um, they're not on affiliate links, so feel free to, um, to click on those. And um, I hope they're useful. If they are useful, let me know. Um, if you want to subscribe to my channel, click on my face just here. I'll put a list of my wild camping videos up here and I shall see you next time.